Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwe. I'm recording this video on Remembrance Day. I'll probably release it the day or two after, I think. Remembrance Day is a uh, November 11th here in Canada. It's a big day for me. It always has been. It's been something that that my family has always um, paid attention to. We've always revered. Both of my, my, my grandfathers served with the North Shore Regiment in the Canadian Army. Uh, they landed at Juneau Beach in 44. They enlisted in 1939. They walked the beaches of of England with uh, two by fours over their backs, hoping to fool the Germans into believing that they were armed. Um, they fought through France, they fought through Belgium, they fought through Germany. Neither of them came home as the same person they were when they went. Both of them, both of them, um, carried demons, uh, traumas from the war. I loved my grandfathers. I loved my grandfathers. And because of them and because of my, my, my grandmothers and because of my, my parents, Remembrance Day was always a big deal. And so on Remembrance Day, I often find myself completely choked up thinking about my grandfathers and their stories and the stories that I've, that I've heard about them and the stories that I've heard about, well, about war in general, I guess. But there's something else that I often think about on Remembrance Day, and it's my kids. See, I have two older kids and I have two younger kids. And my two older kids are both of, of age. If, of, if Canada ever declared war, they would be the perfect age to be sent off. My two younger kids, they're too young for it. But I don't know what the world's going to look like in a few years. And it's entirely possible that in 10 or 15 years, we will face that kind of crisis, that kind of situation. And I am terrified that my kids will go off and fight. I'm terrified that my kids would find themselves embroiled in in conflict, find themselves overwhelmed in war. So I often find myself asking the question, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Right now, of course, we have war in Ukraine. We have war in Gaza. We have war and echoes of war in West Africa and Azerbaijan, Armenia, Yemen. We have conflict, violent conflict all over. I watched, and I'm sure many of you have seen this. If you haven't, I'm going to include a link to it. It's great. It's very long, but it's wonderful. It's a, a conversation between um, Bassam Youssef, who is an Egyptian uh, comedian. He's American now. I believe he took his American citizenship. Uh, he's uh, originally from from Egypt. And Pierce Morgan, the uh, the British pundit, talk show host. They had like a two hours, I like guess, yeah, something close to two hour conversation about what was going on in Gaza between uh, Israel and and the Palestinians, between the IDF and Hamas. And there were many, many, many parts of it that just are, again, thoughtful and thought-provoking and really good questions. And anyhow, at one point, they're talking about how to get rid of Hamas. And and Morgan asks Yosef, you know, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And Yosef says, well, I, I don't know. But what we're doing isn't working. Right? What we're doing isn't working. He later goes on to say... Um, that Israel, the IDF, is the best recruiter for Hamas. Now, this comes back to something I said a, a week or so ago uh, in a video I did that 
today's atrocities become tomorrow's rallying cry. Right? Remember the Alamo. The, the atrocities we commit today become the things that rally our enemies tomorrow. And I began thinking along those lines again. And I began thinking about Yosef, what Yosef has said, where he said, you know, I don't know how to, how to get rid of Hamas, but this isn't working. And I come back to my question, how do I, how do I operate in this world in such a way that I can help prevent my children from having to fight? Because if you apply Basam Yosef's um, logic and you apply uh, our study of human history, and how one thing begets another thing, and one act of violence begets another act of violence, and which begets another, which begets another, which begets da 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 I come to the realization that my response today to my enemies the cost of my response today to what my enemies do to me will be paid for by my children. So the atrocity that's committed today is which leads to the to our enemies rally our, our, our enemies call to arms tomorrow that's actually can can be summed up quite terrifyingly in the cost of my response and reaction towards those who harm me and those who harm mine and those who attack what I love, the cost of that will be paid for by my children. I know that I don't want my children to ever have to face war. So therefore, I know that I don't want my children to pay the price. I want to spare my children the cost of my actions. I want to spare them the cost of my response, of, of my choices, of my violence. So how do I respond to the evil that's committed against me today? In such a way that it will cost my children nothing in the future. How do I respond to my enemies today in such a way that it doesn't cost my children their lives, their identity, their joy, their peace, their hope? How do I respond to my enemies in a way that doesn't leave my children scarred? Romans 12, tough chapter, tough chapter. Romans 12 says, do not repay evil for evil. But what if they do something really horrible? Do not repay evil for evil. As a matter of fact, live your life in so far as you are able in peace with everyone. Everyone? Yeah, everyone. Even my enemies? Yes, your enemies too. Your choice should always be to live in peace. Don't ever seek revenge. Don't ever seek revenge on those who harm you. Leave room for God. It's a tough one. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Not yours, Ed. Mine. Leave room for me to do the work that I promised to do. Leave room for me to do what I do. Don't take it upon yourself. You don't, you don't need to take revenge. So do not seek revenge. Leave room for me to do what I do. And do not overcome evil. Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. So it's not that difficult, is it? Let me rephrase that. It's not that complicated, but it is incredibly difficult. How do I live my life in such a way that my children 
won't pay for my responses, won't pay for my reactions, won't pay for my desire to lash out at my enemies. Do not repay evil for evil. Do not seek revenge. And so far that I am able, my decision should lead me to live in peace with those around me. Do not over try to overcome evil with evil, but with good. But you're going to be in danger. Yeah, you are. And it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, it is. It is. You know, the truth is, a friend of mine, my one of my mentors, actually, when I was in seminary, she gave me this sign and I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I don't know what I did with it. But it says... Love your enemies. It really pisses them off. So if you find yourself in this position where you really want to get back at your enemies. Romans 12, again. If your enemy, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. You'll piss them off. They won't know what to do with you. You'll confuse them. And ultimately, shame and guilt will come raining down upon them. All of a sudden, in your response to take care of them, they'll see the horrors of what they've done. Now, there are people in the world who feel like violence is their only option. I still can't justify it. I'm sorry, I I can't justify it, but I will say this. As a middle-aged white guy living in Nova Scotia, Canada, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I was born with 14 silver spoons in my mouth. I'm speaking from a position of affluence, and I'm speaking from a position of power. So hear me out on this. Those of us who have should give. Those of us who find ourselves in positions of power, those of us who find themselves in positions of stature, we should be the first ones to say, I will not lash out at my enemy. I will not lash out at the people who try to harm me. I will not lash out at at those who want to destroy me. If we do, we're just going to perpetuate the violence. So for those of us who come at this question from a position of of blessing we must be the ones to first say no violence no re no like response no revenge the old ways our old ways of doing things and by that i mean you know throughout human history One person attacks another. One nation attacks another. The response is almost always bloody near ritualistic. We hit back. And we hit back harder than we got hit so that they'll never make that mistake again. They'll never do that again. Was it the Sean Connery line in The Untouchables? If they come at you with a knife, you come at them with a gun. One of, they send one of yours to the hospital, you send one of theirs to the morgue. That's the Chicago way. That way doesn't work. It has demonstratedly failed over and over and over again throughout human history. Those of us who call ourselves followers of Christ, we would do well. We would do very well to remember that Jesus is a new way to live. He calls us to a new way to live. He demonstrates a new way to live. That's one we should follow. Again, it's not easy, but it's simple. Love your enemy. Love your neighbor. 
love love those people of God who are all around us who appear in front of us in all different forms and in all different contexts I don't want my children to go through what my grandfathers went through I'm very fortunate that I didn't go through it myself I don't want them to so if I want to be if I want my children to experience a life of peace my only choice my only choice is to go out and be a person of love. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray, I pray that um, you and I will choose to take these words from Romans literally. I pray that we will be courageous enough to to offer an example that seems to be so counterintuitive to humanity's understanding. If your enemy is hungry, feed them. If your enemy is thirsty, Give them something to drink. Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Nemultus.